Today we're talking about something you can find in most garages and basements all over the place. We're talking about some of the insane values that fishing lures and fishing tackle can go for. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about those dirty, dingy fishing tackle boxes that you find at garage sales, thrift stores, flea markets, all over the place all the time. There's some big value in some of those that most people walk by due to condition, what it is, the dirt on it, rusty hooks, all sorts of different things. Let's hop over now and show you some of the insane values some of these can go for. Now, fishing lures I find all the time, like this one here. This one is made out of wood. It's finely painted, original hooks, everything you would want to expect from something like this. Now, condition isn't everything in some of these. If they're fairly scarce, they don't show up very often, even damaged with the paint, the finish gone, they still can sell. There's also people that will repair these. You can send some off and they will re-gesso, repaint, and then refinish the outside so it again is watertight and could be used if you wanted to. Now here's a head and minnow. This is just one random one that I happen to grab. This one went for three thousand dollars it doesn't look much different than the one i just showed you if you don't know this type of material there's quite a few different varieties different makers different designs that will go for some insane amounts of money the manufacturer on these matters the most if you find one from the right manufacturer it can almost always sell for some decent money now the best version just like a toy or anything like that would be in a box a boxed version of these will almost always sell for more than the actual item itself on its own. You always want the box. If you have the paperwork, instructions, or the little catalog inserts that came with almost every one of these, that's even better. Here's a perfect example. This is a Creek Chub, very, very well-known brand, $2,977. It's in the original box. Now, one thing that you're going to run into, and I've seen it so many times, you'll find a bunch of these in a box in a garage somewhere, something like that, but it won't be the right box. If you look through enough of these, you'll see in the titles where it says correct box. The wrong box is constantly put on it. Sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it is not. Sometimes the model number was a sticker on the outside and people will just take that off and just send it off like it's the original box. So you gotta be careful with these. There are some fake ones and some reproductions, some repaired ones, as I said before. So you gotta know what you're doing a little bit in this area. But these sorts of things loose, even in the box, can show up in garages all over the place in the attic your old barn sit in the back of some abandoned truck somewhere even that's been out in the sun even in rough condition these still can sell and this one had 38 bids so this isn't some phenomena this isn't some one-off or some oddball sale now carded items as i said in the box is best carded items items that were made to be sold at a retail establishment on the rack card now this is a nice lot from the 70s all still original on there two thousand two hundred and forty seven dollars it's nos it's just the way you would want to find something like this good bidding the whole works excellent excellent item here something you should be nabbing up most people may not realize it especially if it doesn't have a date on the specific item and most of them don't now, some of the main players in the sports industry played into the field of making fish lures. Winchester Firearms made fishing lures, among other things. They make a ton of different things, if you're unaware. I've got many different items that were made by Winchester. The fishing lures now are fairly scarce, especially in the box with the Winchester logo on it. Finding one in the box is really the key because they are very scarce, usually damaged in the whole works. There are reproduction boxes as well. People will recreate the boxes for display items, and sometimes those can end up out on the market trying to be sold as a real item. $2,529 on this classic Winchester piece. Now, many of these are works of art. 
They were handmade in some cases. Some of them were hand-painted, hand-decorated, the whole works. There are fishing decoys that would be put in the water to hopefully draw more fish to a certain area. Now, some of these can be sunk to the bottom, and these will float because they're basically pockets of air. Some of them have been floated down from the top from a, a bobber or a buoy or something along that line. This is a double-headed fish, so it could attract fish from two different directions kind of fooled the fish so to speak eighteen hundred and twenty seven dollars now here's one that's just titled the expert it doesn't look like this person actually knows who it's by and some of them you may not be able to determine that there are books and i do mean a ton of books just on this sort of area just because there's so much value in these you can find some material online that will give you the basics on how to distinguish certain brands from certain other brands these are just very unique very artistic as i said if you look at this closely you can see the grains of the wood you can see that this is an earlier one because of the shininess how thin it is what's there it's an interesting one to say the least over seventeen hundred dollars on this one this would be something you could find in a tackle box that you may not have a single clue would carry some money it may even have algae or some seaweed still stuck to it from years and years ago i always look past that for the treasure at the bottom of the tackle box now moonlight bait is another company that goes well back this is from around 1915 see if I can show you a better picture of what it actually looks like. This reminds me of some of the more modern day bobbers, I would call them as a child. Little wooden poppers, bobbers. This is a lure as well. The color scheme, it's made out of wood. It's just what you would expect to find in tip-top condition. It's got the box as well. $1,475. The box has some incredible graphics on it, in my opinion. The bug. It's trying to describe it as a bug. Now, some of these have movement, and you can kind of play around with it with your rod. Anybody who's a fisherman knows exactly what I'm talking about. I love fishing truthfully, so this area has always fascinated me. I've been picking up tackle boxes since I was seven or eight when my father first started taking us out fishing. So I love fishing. I love the old stuff too. It's really unique. There's other areas of this as well. For the ones that aren't worth much money, many people can take them apart and make Christmas ornaments and all sorts of craft items out of the valueless ones and then turn them into a profit too. So just because they're not worth something on the collectible field doesn't mean that they still can't be sold. There are many people on Etsy, even on eBay, that will make crafts out of these, set up a whole decoration scheme for a Christmas tree, other holidays as well. Now here's a Charles Harris. This is a really early one. They've got it circa 1908, probably about the same time frame. He's listed in all of the books. Almost $1,300 for this one. There are some designers that are fairly well known that made them by hand. Some of them made them in a small studio. They sold them to the local bait shops and things like that. Those are the ones that can go for some insane amounts of money and that are usually on the top of the list like this one here. Now, here are some from Howes. These are considered vacuum baits. Now, I'm not sure if it's the condition or how they were formed into the shape. These are pretty much all wood from the ones that I have personally seen. Um, they're formed, they're shaped. I think we can see uh, some of the damage to them. If you look closely, you can see some wood exposed as well. Now, they have brass eyes in the face of these. Now, these kind of remind me of some of the frog jiggers and things like that, that you can skip up on top of the water to attract bass and things. I'm not really sure on the specifics on these. I have run across a couple of really beat up ones in a few boxes before, but they'll still sell. Just the shape itself, even with almost no paint on it, you can still get some money for these. $1,295 for these. Now here's another fish decoy by Fluger, which made other things like reels and things like that. A Fluger, a real nice Fluger reel, uh, they can go for some good money, let's just say. Now this is another decoy, and this one looks like it's made to hang down from a Fluger of sorts. They'd put a whole bunch of these in areas so it would look like a school of fish and then you could go on out there and hopefully snag one, put it by some lily pads or something like that. Just like in duck decoys, same basic principle. $1,252 these look extremely realistic the better ones here's another creek chub another one of those names that you should always try and look up or snag if they're dirt cheap the color schemes the the paint job is what always fascinated me it's obviously a silk screen pattern over the the bright colors the darker colors go over it would be my guess you can see the eyes some of these are brass some of these are glass i do believe this is a glass version here 
Again, you can repair some of these. Some of these can go for some insane values, repaired or not. $1,200 for this one here. Now, here's one by Lloyd & Company here. This is one of my favorite looking ones. It's called Hungry Jack. It looks like a fish actually going to eat another fish. So it's really an interesting one here. It's comical. It's what you would expect, even in not so great condition. Now, look at the mouth of the larger fish there. It's all flaking off. These were constructed with gesso on the outsides of many of these to seal the wood. A gesso is kind of like a plaster. And then the paint was applied. With the gesso down first, the paint would soak in to the gesso when it would be more firm. So it would hold up better. It would look better. Lots of these have multiple layers of paint on it with transparent coatings to give it that glisten, that scaly, iridescent look. And then they're coated and sealed from the weather. So what happens is chunks of these can flake off if they're not taken care of. A dry attic, a dry garage can do that to them as well. As I said earlier, you can't have these repaired where somebody will re-glue the structure back down to the bait, the actual paint and gesso, just like on a painting. It's kind of like the same type of restoration. They'll fill it in and then fill in the areas that are missing paint. You won't notice the lines or any of those crevices or anything else like that. Smooth finish, and it will actually prolong the life of it as well. This is an excellent one here, 1175 bucks. Now here's an early Shakespeare. Shakespeare as well makes reels and things like that. Just to show you the condition on this one here, most of the finish on this one is gone. The hardware is there, the mechanics, the spinner on the end, the tri hooks and the whole works are all there. This would be one of those that someone would probably purchase and possibly repair. If the finish was on here, this would be another thousand bucks plus probably onto the price. So instead of selling it for 990, someone may get two grand, 2,500. It depends on what's supposed to be on the outside and if they can match that correctly. There's another heading right here. This is an underwater minnow with the correct box. As I said, the box means a lot. So you have to have the original box, the correct box for it. Some of these from the earlier days of the company were made out of wood, wood boxes. That's what you will see. And here is a perfect example. Excellent, excellent item. The wood boxes just don't show up very often. Um, from what I have seen. They just don't show up. It describes everything. It says the specifics on this exact one. The speckles on this one's pretty neat in my book. I haven't seen one of these in person, but I've seen hundreds and hundreds of vintage original lures. They're just incredible pieces of art, as I said. It's more along the lines of folk art in my book, primitive style to some extent, because going back for hundreds and hundreds of years, people have made lures of some sort or decoys of sorts for ducks, for fish, for all sorts of things. Excellent one here. I love this one, honestly. I'm surprised it didn't go for a little more than 935 bucks. And lastly, I buy just empty boxes whenever I see them, if they've got decent graphics or it's a good name. The empty boxes can go for some good money. And this is a Jameson Muskie. Jameson's the company that made this. This is just the box. $2,550. I don't care if it's an empty box. I will buy every empty box that someone sets behind for a dollar or less if it's at least decent vintage and has some good graphics on it. So boxes are excellent, as you can see from the price of this one, $2,500. So you could imagine that the lure for this is probably three or 4000 5000 or more. There are lures out there that can go for $10,000 plus dollars fairly easily if you get the right rare one with the box paperwork mint primo condition condition is really important but it is not everything in this category because of the rarity the scarcity of some of these so anyway that's what i have for you today well there you have it hopefully that gave you an idea some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends
From the people who brought you Dallas, Flamingo Road with Howard Duff, Stella Stevens, Mark Harmon, Morgan Fairchild, John Beck, and Christina Raines. Special preview Monday.